Hello and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be show you, showing you what I believe to be the best nuclear reactor setup for Tekkit. So this is what you would do normally obviously, you'd have the nuclear reactor in the middle and that's got these slots in and then when you place the uh, reactor chamber around it like so one on the top and one underneath then it gets a lot bigger okay and basically you're gonna have a lot of uranium cells in there but they need to be cooled now the usual way that people do this is with coolant cells here and I'm not sure if I can remember what these are called Oh, hang on. There we go. Uh, integrated heat dispersers. Uh, which, and there are, I'm sure you'll be able to find a lot of these on the web somewhere. People are saying the best way to get the most uranium cells in here and keeping them cooled. But I think this way works a lot better. So, what you have to do, you need some collectors or alternatively you could use any kind of matter creation and some condensers here so I'm just this is normal energy condenser a relay mark 3 and a collector mark 3 now I know probably most of the other tutorials you've seen of how to do this won't have involved the EE mod equivalent exchange so yeah, don't get any angry comments about that. But this is the best setup for Tekkit, in my opinion. Okay then. So now I'm just gonna stick down the transposers. I don't have a screwdriver. Hang on a minute. Sorry about my terrible spelling. Well, typing. I do know how to spell screwdriver in case you were wondering. So these have got to be the right way around with the small hole there pointing away from the chest. Okay, now I'm going to use some redstone tube to connect these up. There we go, and a timer uh, with a piece of redstone dust. So they are now pulsing very, very quickly. Now you feed the pneumatic tube into any side of this nuclear reactor. Sorry about my terrible clicking. There we go. Uh, this will be causing a little lag, I'll just destroy that for now. I'll put that back on later. Now, so basically the concept of this is, these will be generating ice. Yeah, now ice can cool, s cool it down a lot faster than coolant cells can. Um, so if I have these making ice, you can see they're going incredibly fast. Which is good. You need them to go very fast. Okay, and now what I'm going to do with this nuclear reactor, I'll just get some H3 cable and an MFSU so I can actually show you how much uh, energy these things are going to be creating. Hang on a sec. Sorry about this. There we go. Sorry, I'm not free. Okay. So I'll just connect this up to a MFSU. Basically a massive battery. But if you're watching this video you should probably know what all this stuff is. And now, um, what we're going to do with this is, the ice is going to be pumped out of these three chests here, and it's going to go into the reactor. And I'm just going to show you just how many uranium cells you can get into this reactor without it exploding. And trust me, you do not want this thing to explode. They are incredibly powerful. So, I'm just going to get... 
uh, I'm going to start these pumping. You do have to have these pumping very fast, otherwise this won't work. Because the thing about the ice uh, cooling the reactor, it does go. Um, it does take a lot of ice for it to cool it properly. Uranium. Here we go. These are what we're going to be using: uranium cells, not re-enriched uranium, because. I really can't be bothered to make that on my survive ticket survival, so I'm not going to use that today. Yep, all this stuff. But we're not going to put this in yet because these haven't finished pumping. In fact, just to be safe, I'm going to add a couple more of these thingies. just to make sure that it is completely safe. Now obviously this is it will be a complete disaster if a creeper came in and destroyed one of your one of these pipes so you don't you want to make sure that this is in a room somewhere that creepers aren't going to be able to get basically. Oh yeah. Never mind. You want to be very careful. There we go. There. Okay, that's filling up pretty nicely. Put all these down onto the bottom row. And we'll start putting the uranium in. Okay. <sighs> right. So, oh start getting this in. You can hear now that it's starting to work. Okay then. I need an ultra high voltage transformer. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. I'll fix that later. <laughs> <laughs> Complete fail by me there. Oh well. I shall soon fix that. Yep, you can keep putting it in. It's not going to explode. All except the bottom row. There. Look at that. Some of these tutorials only got maybe 10 or even 15. Look at all that uranium. Right, what's it called? Hang on. I will, f I will fix this. Is that it? H3 transformer? I guess it is. Sorry about this. Get some more HV cable. That's the wrong way around. With these um, HV transformers, the high current goes into the one with three, depending on what texture pack you're using, and the low current comes out of the one with one. So I'll now get an MFSU, see if this works. I am just wasting my uranium cells now, but oh well. That that is incredibly fast. It's much faster than anything else. And look at this. You can see these. They are usually staying about at a stack. Uh, sometimes, if you came, if you left it for a while and then came back, you might see one of these getting to about 50, 58. It's 57. It's going down to there, but it doesn't matter. It just kind of fluctuates a bit. But this is a lot better than most of the stuff that you'll find anywhere else and you can see we're already probably about an eighth full and th remember this is an MFSU so it can store a load of EU there and that's a basic basically it then hope to see you next time